Here's what people think spiritual awakenings look like. Yay, I'm awake. We're all connected. We're all one. Everything is love. Hey, give me a hug. I can tell you from experience in working and connecting with thousands of people all over the world that this is not how the majority of us have a spiritual awakening. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the eight hardest signs of spiritual awakening that you can encounter, including some that you're not going to hear of anywhere else. And most importantly, I'm going to help you overcome these signs so you can live through your spiritual awakening with more peace and joy. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. Now, I don't want to give the impression that a spiritual awakening is just this horrible experience with just negative aspects to it, because that's not true at all. Spiritual awakenings are wonderful and they're filled with many moments of bliss and of feeling connected to all that is and just ecstasy and joy. But in those aspects of your spiritual awakening, you don't need any help with because when you're going through the wonderful parts of the spiritual awakening, who needs help, right? It's wonderful. So I saw, shot this video specifically to help you go through some of the hardest parts of the spiritual awakening, but it's not to say that there are only hard parts, okay? So I wanted to leave that here. In this video, we're gonna go over it in two parts. In part one, we're going to go over the eight hardest signs of spiritual awakening that you can encounter, some of which you're not gonna hear anywhere else, especially in personal development or spirituality circles. These are not talked about. And then in part two, I'm going to help you overcome these signs by sharing my top five strategies to help you kind of work with these signs. If you're encountering any of them, work with them so you can kind of get your spiritual awakening a little bit more on track and so that you can experience your spiritual awakening with more joy and peace. Once you finish watching this video, let me know in the comments below how many of the signs that I mentioned in the video are you experiencing in your life right now? Let me know in the comments below. All right, on to part number one, and that is the eight hardest signs of spiritual awakening. Sign number one is an increased sensitivity. <laughs> So increased sensitivity means that when that spiritual awakening is triggered, when you start your spiritual awakening, your energy system, it feels like your energy system explodes and it just opens up. It opens wide up. And what happens is you become very, very sensitive to the energy around you, hyper, hyper sensitive. And there are usually two ways in which you become very sensitive. The first way is you become very sensitive to the energy of people, of the people around you. And so a lot of people reach me and they are just freaking out because they are so sensitive to the energy of people, other people's energy, that they feel like they're constantly running away from this energy because it's too intense, especially initially when you're first having your spiritual awakening. And this happened to me also, so I know exactly uh, how you're feeling if you're feeling this. So that's one way that your sensitivity increases. The other way that your sensitivity increases is that you open up to the spirit world more, meaning that you start to be able to hear your spirit guides or hear the other side. And I'm using air quotes <laughs> because a lot of times when, when we start to communicate with the spirit world, we're not really hearing with our physical ears. We're hearing with our sixth sense. Okay. And so your sensitivity may mean that you start to connect with the spirit world. You may start to be able to uh, clearly receive messages from your spirit guides you may start to have really intense dreams or just your, your ability to communicate in one way or another, your ability to communicate with the other side, with the spirit world increases. And this can be really jarring for people, especially if you weren't spiritual at all before your spiritual awakening, right? Because suddenly your system opens up and you start connecting with realms and levels of consciousness that you didn't connect with before. And this can be really jarring. So, there's uh, sign number one is an overall increase in sensitivity that can be really jarring for the person going through it. Sign number two is mental disturbances. <laughs> now, before I get into this a little bit more deeply, I want to leave a side note, ding, ding, side note here. And the side note is that 
Although it is so frequent that people who are going through a spiritual awakenings have mental disturbances, and I'm going to get into this right now, I'm not saying that all mental issues or all psychological and mental conditions are being caused by a spiritual awakening. So I want to leave this really clearly here and, you know, leaving these side notes is really important to me because I have a clinical background and I don't want in any way to make you think that when I'm talking about mental disturbances having to do with spiritual awakening, that I'm simply saying that mental illness doesn't exist and that everybody that has mental illness is going through a spiritual awakening. That's not what I'm saying at all. But and now, uh, now that I've had this side note, but people going through spiritual awakenings, there are so many of us. And I, again, have connected with thousands of people from across, across the world. I have a pretty big sample size when it comes to this. And the majority of us going through spiritual awakenings do indeed have mental disturbances during a spiritual awakening. And what does this mean? Mental disturbances. Well, it's very common to go through bouts of depression when you're going through a spiritual awakening. It's very common for uh, certain events that psychology or psychiatry would call hallucinations, psychosis. This would be diagnosed as hallucination, uh, hallucinations or psychosis in general medicine and in psychiatry. But in fact, if the person is going through a spiritual awakening and their energy system is increasing, their energy system is opening up and they're starting to connect with the spirit world, then what psychiatrists may call hallucinations or psychosis isn't that at all because people are in fact connecting with different levels of consciousness that they weren't before. Okay. So this is important to leave here. The majority of us will experience mental disturbances and it doesn't have to be as serious as a psychosis or a hallucination or anything like that. It can be something as simple as increased activity in your brain, meaning your mind just starts thinking at hyper speed, very disjointed thoughts, um, very anxious thoughts, very fearful thoughts. Um, sometimes you can, you can feel actually a little paranoid because when your system is opening up and you start to connect with different realms of reality and different levels of consciousness, it can be so frightening that your brain starts to just say, mayday, mayday, you're going insane. This is just, all, uh, you, you, your brain just starts creating these, these stories about what is happening to you. And that can cause so much anxiety. Okay. And the mental disturbance component, this is one of the signs that I had the most difficulty with uh, during my own spiritual awakening. And it's one of the signs that my clients have the most issues with. Okay. But I want you to understand that mental disturbances are normal during a spiritual awakening because what's happening is you are having an acceleration in your growth. You are, you are accelerating and changing so quickly that your psyche has a very difficult time have keeping up with the changes, but also your psyche is sort of disintegrating and or dissolving in a certain sense because a new you is being born. I'm going to talk about this in a little while. There's another sign that's called changes in personality. So I'm going to get to that in a little bit, but your whole mind is changing. Your whole brain is changing. And so these mental disturbances that come up during a spiritual awakening are quite normal, but I understand that they're so scary sometimes. So if you're going through any of this and you're know, you know that you're going through a spiritual awakening, this will hopefully help you just calm a little bit and center yourself a little bit. It's completely normal to have mental disturbances during spiritual awakening and by mental disturbances. I mean, again, disjointed thoughts. Um, your, your mind seems to be racing with thoughts that make no sense, uh, fear-based thoughts. Um, sometimes you feel like you're going completely insane or, or you feel paranoid that like the world is out to get you or that the world is unsafe. These thoughts are very normal during a spiritual awakening. And I know that they can be scary, but a lot of people go through them and this is just temporary. All right. So I wanted to leave this here. If, if you are experiencing this, the mental disturbances are temporary. The more that you know how to work with them, and I'm going to teach you how to work with them later on in the video, the more that you know how to work with the mental disturbances with the shifts in your mind, the easier this can become. 
Now, there are two main reasons why the mental disturbances kick up during a spiritual awakening. And the first one is that you actually, when you're going through a spiritual awakening, your system opens up, your soul starts to accelerate your growth. One of the things that the soul does to accelerate your growth is it starts to trigger old wounds that come up to be healed. And get this, <laughs> ding ding here, those old wounds, they don't have to be just of things that happen to you in this lifetime. Your soul will bring up, they, the, your soul will bring up things from past lives to be healed in the now moment. And this is why this can be so jarring because what happens mentally is when your soul triggers these old wounds to come up to be healed, you can actually start having flashbacks from past lives, meaning things that did not happen to you in this lifetime and you know it when you're going through it. You can be sitting in meditation and you can go into spontaneous past life regressions. This happened to me and this has happened to countless of my clients where I was just sitting in meditation and boom, I started to experience a past life memory. I went into auto regression, spontaneous auto regression, where I started experiencing a different timeline that had happened to me in the past. And imagine, I mean, really think about this. When you're having these flashbacks, from lifetimes that are different from this one. Imagine how jarring this is. So if you're going through this, I know exactly how you're feeling. I remember in phases during my spiritual awakening, initially especially, I would be washing dishes and just going about my day doing nothing. You know, I'd be washing dishes and then suddenly, boom, I would, I would remember an intense past life episode that had happened to me. It would just come up in my mind. I could see it clearly. There were some moments where I remember I was a warrior and I was killing people and there was just so much violence and those images came up into my mind in so much detail. I knew exactly what was happening. I knew that it was a past life memory, but it was still really scary, right? Like imagine you're washing the dishes and you just have past life memories come up into your mind. It's very, very scary. So that's the first, the first reason where the mental disturbances come from a lot of times is that your soul is triggering past life memories to come up to be healed. And your mind literally can remember these things that didn't happen in this lifetime. And it could be really scary things. It could be very frightening things. And so that causes a bit of mental disturbance. The second thing that can cause mental disturbances during a spiritual awakening is that because your energy system opens up, now you have to remember that your mind is a part of your energy system, right? Thoughts are energy. They are nothing more than energy. So when your whole system opens up, when you become more sensitive, that's one of the signs I already talked about. When you become more sensitive, it sort of means that your mind opens up too. Your mental sensitivity opens up too. And this means that it could be very easy for you to start tapping into the collective consciousness, the thought forms in the collective consciousness. Now, what the heck do I mean by this? So if thoughts are energy and energy cannot be destroyed, it can only be transformed. It means that on an energy level and on a spiritual level, every thought that has ever been thought in this reality still exists. <laughs> that could be a bit mind boggling, but it still exists. So think about it. 7 billion people on the planet. We think about, I think the, the, I think the statistic is that we, we have around, um, what is it? 80,000 thoughts a day. <laughs> I think I read that statistic somewhere. So imagine 7 billion people times 80,000 thoughts a day. And you can imagine the material, the thought forms that exist in the collective consciousness, just kind of hanging around the planet. Okay. In the form of energy. And when you become sensitive, you can more easily tap into your mind can more easily tap into those thought forms of the collective consciousness. And you know, if you, if you, if you're around the planet, you know that things are a little chaotic right now out there. So that means that the collective consciousness of the planet is also a little bit chaotic. Well, if your system opens up and you start to tap into that, to that collective, to those collective thought forms, it could be really scary because you can be tapping into hateful comments, uh, hateful thought forms. You can be tapping into fearful thoughts from other people that are just collected in the collective consciousness. And so this, this can cause a lot of fear in you. You can start to think again that you're going crazy because these thoughts feel a little alien. They feel totally outside of normal for you. They feel like they're not yours. <laughs> if you really sit with it, 
And the reason is because they're not yours, kind of. They're out there, they're part of the collective, but you're simply through your sensitivity tapping into the thought forms more easily, all right? So these are the two main reasons why mental disturbances can kick up during a spiritual awakening. But now that you know that this is what's happening, hopefully after listening to this explanation, this will start to calm your system down a little bit more. Sign number three is increase in anxiety, all right? This is, this is super, super common. Um, you know, as you're going through the spiritual awakening and your energy system opens up and you start to go through this accelerated process of growth, your entire system is jarred, especially your nervous system, because the nervous system is the mediator between the spirit world and the physical world. And so the nervous system gets really taxed. It can feel very hypersensitive during a spiritual awakening. And this means that anxiety can increase. So I've had a ton of people reach out to me and they say, you know, I didn't have anxiety before my spiritual awakening. This makes no sense. Why am I anxious now? And it's very, very normal that this happened because again, you're very sensitive and your nervous system is going a little bit on overdrive, trying to keep up with all of the changes that are occurring. So it's very normal to go through anxiety or a kick up in anxiety during a spiritual awakening. I've done a video dedicated to just spiritual awakening anxiety. It's going to pop up right here. So check out that video. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. Also go into that video. If you're experiencing anxiety right now, check out that video and where I go really deep into spiritual awakening anxiety and how you can work with it. Sign number four is personality changes. <laughs> All right, now this may seem like it's not very scary or it's not hard to navigate, but it is hard to navigate because what happens is you are going through such profound changes during a spiritual awakening. And it's not just that you're going through such profound changes, it's that you're going through profound changes very quickly. And what ends up happening is your entire psyche, I talked about this a little bit uh, um, earlier in the video, your entire psyche stored, sort of starts to melt. Your ego dissolves a little bit, your old ego, okay? And so your old personality traits will literally start to fall sometimes from one day to the next. I have people saying to me, you know, I, I woke up one day and suddenly I didn't like to do this or this or that, things that I used to like before and then suddenly I was just like, I don't like to do those things anymore. <laughs> And this is really, really common. Your entire personality may change. This happened to me and this happens to thousands of people who are going through spiritual awakenings. Your old personality will die and a new personality comes online and it can be a completely, you can turn into a completely different person than you did before. You may actually start to dress differently. <laughs> you may start to like different types of music, different foods. Everything can change. Your entire personality can change. And this can be a little bit scary when it's happening because the changes are so quick and, and it can be scary, especially if the people that surround you start to put pressure on you or kind of question you. So I have people that will reach out to me and they'll say, you know, my family is really worried about me. They keep saying, you know, I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> You see, so when someone you love comes up to you and says, I don't even know who you are anymore. I don't know who you're becoming. This sort of projection can cause a lot of fear in us because it can cause you to say, wow, well, you know, is something wrong with me? <laughs> and so the pressure that you receive from the outside world can cause even more fear while you're going through these personality changes. But I want you to just calm yourself, keep yourself nice and calm and don't accept those projections from the outside world. Even if it's coming from people that you really love, you have to be very centered and understand that personality changes are completely normal. You're not going insane. Yes, you are becoming a different person because that's part of the spiritual awakening process. There's nothing to worry about that though. It's very normal. The fifth sign is that you feel disconnected and alone. <laughs> so when you're going through a spiritual awakening, energetically what happens is you very often unplug from the energy grid, I call it the energy grid, from the energy grid that you were plugged into before. Your soul unplugs from it. And that can lead to a temporary feeling of being completely disconnected and you can also feel very alone in this process because you're disconnecting from a grid where your family's connected, your old friends are connected, your colleagues are connected, everything is there and you just disconnect from that energy grid. And this can be 
really frightening and it can cause a lot of loneliness. I did a huge video on this one. Uh, it's probably my most watched video on the channel, I think, so that's how much it really resonated with people. I'm gonna leave it here. It's about the process of disconnection, so click on that, uh, watch that video after you finish watching this one. If you feel like you're disconnected from your environment and you feel lonely about it, click on that video to, to watch more. But this is perfectly normal during a spiritual awakening to disconnect from your old energy grid. Eventually, you're going to connect into a new energy grid once your spiritual awakening continues to unfold. But while you're going through this process of disconnection, the feelings of loneliness, sometimes of despair, can be really, really jarring on you, all right? So, I, but I wanted you to know that this is normal. Everybody goes through this process when they're going through a spiritual awakening. It's normal and it's temporary. Sign number six is physical disturbances. <laughs> So just like the mental disturbances, you can also experience physical disturbances and, and the physical disturbances for the majority of people, they're not as frightening as the mental disturbances, but for some people, they can really go through a lot of physical symptoms. Okay. And it could be anything from uh, bloating, increased water retention, weight gain, uh, extreme exhaustion, aches and pains all over the place, muscles twitching. I mean, all kinds of things can happen physically when you're going through a spiritual awakening. But I wanna leave another side note here, ding, ding, side note. <laughs> I wanna leave another side note here because when I say that it's normal to go through these physical disturbances during a spiritual awakening, I'm not saying for you to not seek medical attention if you feel like you need it. Okay. So please don't just shy away from medical attention simply because you know, you're going through a spiritual awakening and you just have to weather all the symptoms. If you feel intuitively that you need to seek out medical attention to help you go through the physical symptoms, please go see a doctor and don't be afraid to go see a doctor. Okay. You know, you can actually rule out anything that may be going on seriously with your body, all right? So go see a doctor, don't be afraid of it, but the physical disturbances and physical symptoms are quite normal during spiritual awakening. Um, I went through a ton of them, a ton of them that were very difficult at times from extreme exhaustion to my muscles twitching, to aches and pains, to just, uh, I'd retain a lot of water and then I'd lose it and then I'd retain a lot of water and then I'd, I mean, it was just, I had an endless list of physical symptoms. Uh, they never turned into anything like actual severe diseases. There are some people that can go through conditions actual diagnosed medical issues that they go through during spiritual awakening that didn't really happen to me but but the physical symptoms were difficult to navigate in my own spiritual awakening and they usually have been in in with my clients too sign number seven is astral projection <laughs> now this may seem like it's not a big deal but this can cause a lot of issues with people because what astral projection is is um, you are being stretched so far by your soul. When you go, th when, when that spiritual awakening is triggered, you start to be stretched by your soul in ways that you have never been stretched before. And so it's very common for you to feel like your consciousness is popping in and out of your body. Okay. I hear this all the time from people. They say things like, I feel like reality is surreal. Um, I feel like my life isn't real. Nothing is real. I don't feel like anything is real. I feel like I'm in the clouds. Um, I feel like, um, I'm just not here. I'm, I'm absent. Okay. So when you hear these statements and if you find yourself thinking these things, it's probably because you are going through this astral projection sign. And it simply means that your consciousness is being stretched way beyond what it has ever been stretched before. And that can leave your system kind of popping in and out in terms of your consciousness. This is very normal and it will start to kind of ground and, and it'll start to streamline a little bit and you won't feel like you're popping in and out. This is a temporary sign, but this is a sign that can leave people a little bit anxious also, because if you feel like your whole reality isn't real, and if you feel like you're not here, you're somewhere else, then that can really cause some discomfort in your current life. And especially if you have family members or people around you that are just looking at you and they're like, where are you? Where have you been? What are you doing? What's going on with you? <laughs> 
So if you have family members or friends that are kind of projecting these fear-based thoughts onto you, then this sign can be a little bit difficult to navigate. But again, this is all temporary and it, it starts to ground, especially when you learn to work with, with uh, spiritual tools and practices, you can start to ground so that you don't feel this popping in and out of your consciousness. Sign number eight is your heart awakens. <laughs> now this can seem like it's a wonderful sign and it is a wonderful sign. There's nothing negative about it. It's such a beautiful, amazing sign of a spiritual awakening, but, <laughs> but, but, the but here is that when your heart starts to open, when your heart awakens, you have to remember that the heart is the central chakra of the system. Your heart is your internal healer, okay? Your heart is what heals everything that's going on in you, okay? So when your heart starts to awaken during a spiritual awakening, when your heart starts to open and expand, one of the first things that it does is it starts to embrace and welcome all of the emotional energy that has been repressed in you for years, maybe decades, maybe even lifetimes. <laughs> And this is where things get jarring because if your heart opens up really quickly, it means that you start to feel the world so much more deeply than you ever have before. And sometimes feeling the world and feeling your own emotions can be really scary and overwhelming. I have people saying to me all the time that when their heart starts opening at first, they feel like shutting it down <laughs> because they temporarily feel they're like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. And they try to shut down the heart because when their heart opens, they're flooded with emotional content that they have never felt before. And it feels so overwhelming. Sometimes people say to me that they feel like they're drowning in their own emotions. Okay. So this is very common when your heart opens. Yes, it's going to start welcoming all of the emotional content that you haven't wanted to deal with before. Okay. Consciously or subconsciously. All right. This is very normal. Everything is okay. And when you learn how to work with the heart, you learn that you can feel all of these things. You can welcome them into your heart. And if you have patience and you sit with that heart energy, your heart starts to incinerate everything. It starts to heal everything. And then pretty soon the emotional, the overwhelm that you were feeling, it starts to decrease and you start to feel better. And this process of your heart opening up starts to feel easier. But I know that this can be, uh, you know, very difficult for people initially because you're not only dealing with your own emotional content, but when your heart starts waking up, you start to just feel love and compassion for others. You start to feel compassion for the suffering of others. You start to be very empathetic to the suffering of others. And that can also overwhelm you, right? Especially if you're, you know, if you watch the news still, which I don't really recommend, but if you're seeing all of the painful things happening in the world and your heart is awakening, this could be really overwhelming because you just, you don't know what to do with all of the pain of the world. All right. This is normal. This is the normal process of a heart opening up and it's okay. And if you learn how to work with the heart, this energy is going to process more quickly and you're, you'll start to feel more stable in your new open heart. Okay. On to the second part of the video. And that is how to handle the signs of spiritual awakening that we just talked about. The first strategy I'm going to share with you is probably, it was probably the most important strategy in the initial phases of my own spiritual awakening. The first four years of my spiritual awakening were really difficult at times. And this first strategy was one of the first lessons that my beautiful spirit guides taught me when I was going through all of these difficulties, especially the mental disturbance part. And so the first strategy is observe without judgment. Okay. Now, what does this mean? This was a key. It became my mantra. It became my running mantra that I would repeat to myself every day, especially when I was going through spontaneous flashbacks from past lives, when I was going into auto regressions and I would find myself experiencing different lifetimes of really painful things that had happened to me. And so I was so overwhelmed with all of this mental material and all of these images and all of these memories that sometimes I would just sit down on my meditation mat and I would just cry. I had no idea what to do but I was really fortunate that I was really connected to my spirit guides. Um, and I could hear what they were saying to me. I could channel what they were saying to me. And, and I remember that one of their first lessons to me was observe without judgment that I had to learn how to detach 
from all of the thoughts that were occurring in my mind, even if they were really disturbing thoughts and even if they were memories and flashbacks and whatever, it didn't matter. They taught me how to watch the mental activity in my mind in the same way that you would watch a movie in a movie theater. Okay. So I had to learn how to sit back on the chair in the movie theater and just watch the movie screen with detachment. Okay. Now <laughs> this is easier said than done, right? When you're going through intense flashbacks from past lives, when you're tapping into the collective consciousness and all you're hearing is just really distorted fear-based thoughts and they're kind of inundating your mind, it can feel like you're positively going insane. And so it could be hard to hold the position of observer, but it's absolutely crucial for you to hold the position of observer when you're going through any of the signs of spiritual awakening, but especially the mental disturbance part because it's the mental disturbance part that really requires you to really detach from all of the stuff going on in your mind. So this, this position of observer simply means that you have to come to the realization that you are the soul. You are the consciousness that observes everything that's happening, including your thoughts, your emotions. You observe everything out there, but you can also observe everything in here. You are the consciousness that observes everything. So you can absolutely sit back way back in your theater chair and watch the screen, watch the movie go off on the screen and not be involved at all in the drama. And this was a key mantra for me when I was going through really difficult symptoms of, of in signs of my spiritual awakening. And I, sometimes I would write this mantra down and I would just repeat it over and over and over every day, especially when I was having these flashbacks or when I would wake up in the middle of the night, this is very common. You can wake up in the middle of the night and your mind is going just a bunch of different thoughts that have nothing to do with your life. And that's because at night you can tap into the collective consciousness more easily. And so a lot of times if you find yourself waking up in the middle of the night with just really disturbing, ridiculous thoughts, it's because you're receiving those thoughts from collective consciousness. And so it's at this moment that you can just take a nice deep breath, separate yourself from the thoughts and from the emotions that you're feeling and, and really, really stand in those shoes of being the observing consciousness of everything that's happening. The second strategy is ground and soothe. <laughs> okay. So I talk about grounding a lot in my videos because it's absolutely essential when you're going through a spiritual awakening, you must ground that energy. Remember you're being stretched way up into the sky, far beyond anything you've ever been stretched before. And so the more that you're stretched upwards, the stronger your and deeper your roots have to be down into the ground. Think like a tree. Okay. A tree can only grow as tall as her roots go deep. Okay. And so that's what you have to do when you're going through any of these signs of spiritual awakening that we just talked about is you have to learn how to ground and how to soothe yourself. So the grounding things, you know, my favorite grounding thing is to go out in nature, go to the middle of a forest, the older the trees you can find, the better. I like to do earthing. I like to take my shoes off and my socks off and just put my feet on the earth. So you can do earthing. You can walk around in nature like that. Um, you can ground by doing body work like massages, or you can do tapping routines. If you don't have money to go get a massage, massage yourself, you know, apply pressure to your body. That's another way to really ground is to apply pressure to your body, uh, massages, body work, um, other things that'll ground and soothe you. You can take baths, warm baths with Epsom salt. Um, you can listen to really soothing music. You can use aromatherapy. Um, you can do meditation. There are a ton of things that you can do to soothe yourself, to calm yourself and to ground yourself. So I recommend using grounding and soothing techniques every single day, especially if you're going through any type of anxiety or if you're feeling unsettled, or if you're going through any of the, the signs that I just talked about earlier in the video, it's essential that you ground and that you soothe. And it's essential that you do this every single day. The third strategy and one that I love so much is hold your power. <laughs> 
You must learn to hold your power. You must learn to come into the shoes of the powerful soul that you are, especially when you're going through that increased sensitivity that I talked about earlier in the video. The more sensitive that you feel to the energies around you, the more you have to stand in your power because if you don't stand in your power, you're going to be constantly overwhelmed by the energies of others. And you know, when people say to me, oh my gosh, you know, I just can't stand other people's energy. I just kind of look at them and I'm like, well, why are you letting other people's energy influence you? <laughs> That's always my question. And people just kind of look at me and they're like, oh, I didn't know I had an alternative. Yes, you do have an alternative. You don't need to be influenced by other people's energy if you don't want to. And this is part of coming into your power, understanding who you are on a soul level, understanding how powerful you are, understanding that you are an extension of source energy and you can stand on your own two feet with a lot of power, not accepting the projections or the energies of others, especially if that energy is uncomfortable or dense and chaotic, why would you want to accept that? So as you're going through your spiritual awakening, this is a huge part of my work with clients is helping them come into their power. One of my favorite little techniques to help you come into your power is first of all, recognize that you are very powerful and that you don't have to take in anyone else's energy. You're not a fragile wallflower. You are a powerful, soul, a powerful eternal soul, and you can stand on your own two feet without taking in anyone's energy. So that's the first thing is realize your power. And then the second little technique that I like to use is to visualize yourself as a burning fire. I love this example. I love this visualization. So if you walk into a room or you walk into a space and the energy is really dense and you're starting to really feel the, the, the density of that energy immediately, you're going to stop, take a nice deep breath, you know, bring your chest out a little bit. If that helps you take a nice deep breath and you're immediately going to start to visualize yourself burning outwards. Okay. You're going to be a burning fire, uh, a living fire and a living fire is a type of fire that burns and transmutes anything that comes into contact with it. All right. So as soon as you visualize yourself as a living fire, literally, it doesn't matter what energy comes your way, it's going to be burned. <laughs> okay. And so I love this this image of walking around as a living fire in your power. This is crucial during your spiritual awakening because you're going to have to come into your power at some point, or you're going to be really stuck in your spiritual awakening for a really long time. Now, the fourth strategy may seem like it's a little bit uh, opposite the other one that I just mentioned right now, but it's also crucial. And the fourth uh, strategy is called hermit when necessary. Okay. So what do I mean by this? This, this hermit when necessary is especially crucial in the initial phases of your spiritual awakening when you don't feel as powerful yet. So maybe you're going through bouts of exhaustion. Maybe your body hurts. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're just going through a bunch of different shenanigans having to do with a spiritual awakening. And let's say you don't feel powerful, no matter how, how much you try to feel powerful, you just can't, you can't visualize the living fire. You don't feel powerful enough. And that's where this strategy comes in. If you feel sensitive, if you feel like you're not in your power yet, then hermit when necessary, meaning remove yourself from situations that are really harsh, really dense, and really overwhelming to your energy system. All right. There's nothing wrong with hermiting. There's nothing wrong with spending significant amounts of time by yourself if you can. And if you feel like it is necessary, I hermited for four years, almost. <laughs> four years I spent in hermit mode. And it was because I was coming into my power. My spiritual awakening was so difficult that I, I really needed that hermit time. I needed that alone time. I needed that time of solitude. It just me and nature. I needed that to kind of build up my defenses. Okay. I'm not build up my defenses, build up my energy system. Okay. That's what I meant. Build up my energy system so that I could walk around in my full power. And so it took me, you know, four years of hermit mode. It doesn't mean that you have to be four years in hermit mode. We're all different. But what I mean with this strategy is if you want to hermit, if you want to spend more time on your own, especially initially when you're going through a spiritual awakening, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you removing yourself from dense and difficult situations temporarily. But here's the ding side note on this one. Ding, ding. <laughs> 
The side note on this one is I don't want you to overuse this strategy, meaning that I'm not saying for you to become a recluse the rest of your life because that defeats the purpose of you being really on earth right now, right? If you're watching my videos and you identify with my energy and you resonate with my energy, what I'm doing is I'm helping you come into your powerful shoes and your powerful life mission as a healer and a light worker in your own right. And so that means that you're not here to live a reclusive life. So don't use this strategy permanently, right? The hermiting strategy is a strategy that we use temporarily, but eventually you're going to have to come into your power and you'll have to come out of hermit mode. And you know, throughout your life, you may come out of hermit mode and then you may want to spend a couple days by yourself and then you may come out of it. There's nothing wrong with that. I just want to leave the side note here that try not to become a recluse for the rest of your life because that defeats the whole purpose of what you're here doing on earth. The fifth strategy is also a play on your power, but it's a little bit different. So the fifth strategy is intend to heal. So this means, <laughs> this means that you're now going to use your power as an eternal soul, as a light worker, as an ancient, ancient soul. You're going to use that power and you are going to really use your power to intend to heal. Intention is so powerful, especially when you put that intention in words, especially if you put them in words out loud, not just in your head, okay? So intention is very, very powerful. Intention is the first phase of manifestation. So you have to intend to heal. And a lot of times, you know, people get a bit confused because when they start working with me, I say to them, you know, do you want to heal this? And they're like, of course I want to heal this, but they haven't done the intention work. They've just been pushing away this wound. They don't want to see it. They've been pushing it away. Well, that's not intention work. That is not intention work because the moment that you say, I intend, to heal, you stop pushing anything away and you start embracing it because that's what healing means. Healing means that I bring to me, into my heart, what needs to be healed and I accept it, I feel it, and I process it. There's no more rejection in me. So intend to heal is a really powerful strategy. Come into your power, journal mantras. I love to use mantras as intention work. You can journal mantras that are, that, you know, here are some examples. I'll give you some examples of intention mantras that are really powerful. You can simply say, I intend to heal this. So whenever something comes up, let's say it's a past life flashback that's really intense and very jarring. Let's say it comes up, you sit on your meditation mat and you write in your journal, you immediately start writing your intention mantras. I intend to heal this. I will heal this now. <laughs> You see, and you could come up with a bunch of different mantras to illustrate this, to just kind of launch this powerful healing intention. And, and you're going to keep working with mantras. The trick with mantras is that the more that you repeat a mantra over and over and over again, the more you activate the power of the energy and you create momentum for that energy to work. All right. So when you design your mantras, when you design your healing and your intention mantras, use them repeatedly, just repeat them over and over and over again, over a course of a meditation. Okay. This intention work is crucial in really being able to navigate all of these signs of, of spiritual awakening. And you know, those mantras that I just shared with you, you can use those, but it's even better if you can design your own intention mantras because they're coming from your heart, they're coming from your soul and they are unique to you. And that makes them even more powerful. Now I want to hear from you. How many of the signs that I discussed in this video are you experiencing in your life right now? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have a question that you want me to answer in my weekly videos, leave them also in the comment with the hashtag ask Christina. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here or head over to my website to take my heart quiz, figure out if your heart is blocked and check out this playlist over here that I curated for you. This will go deep into all things spiritual awakening. So check out this playlist. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I am out.